Hi there, and welcome to Ian's Engage channel. I'm Ian. In a previous video, I showed how I'd begun to update the track plan so that it could be built using Code 55 Track. In this video, I'm going to show the progress I've made with the track plan in the last few weeks. Okay, so I've updated version 43 of the track plan, picking up from where I left off in part 1. I started off by adding the track work for Mantlethorpe Station area. Originally, the curved nature of the main line here had been dictated by the need for it to join back up with the inner loop. As this was no longer the case, I decided to make some changes. Some major changes. As you can see, Mantlethorpe Station has been completely reconfigured. The platforms are now a lot straighter, meaning they can accommodate longer trains than previously. As the track through the station is now straight, it also means that the implementation of the runaround track becomes a lot more conventional, and can serve both platforms. It's also been possible to add a head shunt that will allow holding a loco or a station pilot to assist with turning trains around. The new layout of the station has also saved quite a lot of space on the baseboard, that can now be utilised for infrastructure. Moving over to Shelfington, and the station area here has remained largely similar to how it has been for quite some time now. However, I've brought the station slightly further towards the front of the baseboard to give a little more room for the platform against the back scene. Into Shelfington goods yard area, and because of the switch to Unifrog points, it has been completely reworked. The good news was that I discovered more space than I thought I had. When I'd added the baseboard extension to the area, I'd drawn it on the plan as a triangle that tapered into the far end of the existing baseboard. In actual fact, it was a rectangle, so I gained space for the track plan out of nowhere. I've tried to keep the goods yard design as similar to version 42 of the plan as possible, as I think it gives good operational value. With two sidings representing arrivals and two sidings representing departures and runarounds implemented for each pair. The sidings were never overly long, but with switching to the longer points they've now been reduced by at least one wagon length in each siding. However, I could gain more space by adjusting the short curve at the stem of the goods yard, which is something I'll definitely be looking at the closer I get to implementing the plan. The TMD area remains but now has only two lanes instead of the previous three, meaning it will be modelled as a refuelling depot rather than a maintenance depot. I know that this area of the layout is fairly track intensive, so I've tried to rationalise it to give more space over for the infrastructure that would support the railway, without taking away from the operational side of things. Moving off the main baseboard and into the sill district of the layout, the single line nature of the track has made it a lot easier to convert to Unifrog points. There is very little difference to version 42 of the layout, as the line runs through Sill Harbour Station, around Sill Harbour, or through Sill Fish Market, and then turns around Sill Hill, on its way up the incline towards Sill Fiddle Yard. Once we reach Sill Fiddle Yard, each of the lanes in the Fiddle Yard have become slightly shorter than they were in version 42 of the plan. However, even the shortest lane is over a metre in length, so should be long enough to comfortably accommodate six Mark I coaches and a loco. Because of the more realistic geometry of the Unifrog points, two of the Fiddle Yard lanes end up being closer together than the standard 26.5mm that I'd planned. This had me a little bit worried initially that the lines were too close together, so I had to perform a practical experiment. I printed out the track plan and laid down some rails on top of the plan. The closest lanes were only 23.5mm apart. After positioning a pair of Mark III coaches next to each other on the adjacent lanes, I confirmed that there wouldn't be a problem while running trains through the fiddle yard. It would definitely be difficult, if not impossible, if I wanted to try and manually uncouple items of stock, 
but that didn't really concern me as I intended to use some sort of automatic uncoupling devices in this area of the layout. One good thing about the fiddle yard lanes being closer together was that I'd saved some precious millimetres behind Sill Harbour Station, meaning more space for infrastructure. This brings us back to the main baseboard, and the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that the inner and outer loops have changed configuration. This was brought about by a couple of comments on part one of the video. The concern was that the loops were too close together for the trains to pass without hitting each other. Back in version 41 of the plan, when the curved point was still present, I thought I'd designed the plan so that the two lines were far enough apart for a couple of Mark III coaches to pass each other. So, another practical experiment was required. As you can see, although it's close, there's definitely enough space for the two coaches to pass. When the point had been removed in version 42 of the plan, the tracks had been reconfigured and were actually a little closer together. Even so, as you can see, there was still enough space for the two coaches to pass. However, for version 43 of the plan, I eventually decided to play around with the track design and ended up making the gap between the tracks a little wider at both ends of the loop. I think I like this loop formation a little better, although it takes away some space where I'd intended to have a road at the eastern side of the layout. Now, not only have I been working on the track plan, but I've also been getting used to using Code 55 track. That will be the subject of another video, but one of the things I thought I'd mention is that I've been working on producing a series of track templates, cut from 2mm greyboard using my Cricut machine. These should be incredibly useful for producing consistent track work where track setter curves cannot be used. In particular, for when it's necessary to bring a diverging track from a point back parallel to the main line. OK, so that's about it for this update. Overall, I'm very happy with this track plan after living with it for a week or so, but I'd love to know what you think. Especially about how I've reconfigured Mandlethorpe Station and the way I've eased the two loops away from each other. Oh, and whether or not you'd leave the lanes in Silfiddle Yard so close together. Are there any other changes you'd make? And if so, where and why? Alternatively, if you've got any hints, tips, useful tools or techniques to pass on to a beginner in engaged modelling, or if you simply want to say hello, then please do so in the comments section. Anything and everything you've got to say will be greatly appreciated. In the meantime, thanks ever so much for watching. Hopefully I'll have another update on my progress soon. Bye.